Hey everyone, welcome to my Thanksgiving fall video. I'm going to show you how to do a few fun designs that are really in style now, but I'll break them down to make them super easy for you. Let's get right into it. We're going to do our pumpkin cookie first. I try to cut it with a seam in the middle so I get a nice, clean, round hole in my bag. And I always have a paper towel with me and I just do a few test runs of my line to see how thick it is. It's also a good way to see if your icing is too loose, if it's too, you know, stiff, it's not coming out of the bag properly. And if I'm happy with the size of the hole, I can go on and move to my cookie. So I chose this shape. I like to choose mix up shapes sometimes. You can do this on a circle, you can do this on a rectangle. Um, I like using this shape, it's kind of different and it works for so many different designs. And I'm just outlining my cookie on each corner I want to touch down my piping bag. So basically every change in direction that has a sharp corner, you always want to touch down your bag to secure the icing to the cookie so you can make a nice clean corner. And then I'm going to go in with my flood consistency, so my looser icing here. My outline is thick and my flood is thinner so that, you know, that outline holds in that flood. I'm going right up to the edge of my outline. I'm trying to almost cover my outline a little bit with that flood. If you notice when I put pressure on my bag that it bubbles out of the tip. And so I use the icing to my advantage and I'm trying to push it on top of that edge just to cover it a little bit. I always like to pipe on the outside first and move inward. It doesn't really matter which way you go, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you like going you know, up and down, side to side, you can always do it um, whichever way feels better for you. And then if you have any spots, you can always go with, an, with a scribe. I try to make my corners nice and sharp. So to do that, I usually use my scrub and I pull the icing all the way to those corners. Sometimes your icing when you're flooding doesn't get right up in there. So that's what we use the scribe for. And I've put my cookie aside and I've let it dry for a little while. And you can see that it's matte looking now. So now it's dry enough for us to do our second layer. So here I'm gonna make a pumpkin and we're just outlining a rough outline of the sections of the pumpkin. I'm gonna make it kind of coming off the cookie a little bit, you know, like so the pumpkin's sort of too big for where we're placing it on the cookie, just to give it a little more dimension and effect so it's not right just smack in the middle of the cookie. Sometimes I like to do these off-center designs, they look a little bit more interesting. So I've done a, you know, a big oval in the middle, now I'm doing the sides. And if you make a mistake, you know, it's not wide enough, you can go again and um, you can see in the middle one, my ending didn't, you know, kind of touch the beginning there and that's okay because it's going to be covered in flood. And so what I'm doing is outlining all the sections right now of the pumpkin. And with each section, I'm getting smaller and the ones on the edge here, I'm going, I'm stopping them just a little bit above the other ones where they stop. The ones on the left side, you see that, you know, they're coming off the edge. So I'm just going along with the edge. And then before we add the top two sections, I am going to add my stem first. So I'm going to go ahead and use my brown icing here. And this is my outline again. You can tell the difference in the consistencies every time I'm piping something like this. You can tell it's holding its shape really well. That's my outline consistency. And so here I'm just kind of making a little bit of a crooked stem and I'm trying to make it wide at the bottom. And then I'm going to add my last two sections, again going back to my orange outline. And just doing a couple little bumps at the back just to complete the pumpkin to make it look a little bit more rounded. I like to let my outline dry for, you know, like a minute or two. 
thick icing dries much quicker so it doesn't take much it doesn't have to be fully dry dry enough it doesn't pull the icing when I'm flooding it and I always like to do these little squiggles with my thick icing and then flood on top it makes it a little bit more puffier and it helps prevent craters doesn't always work doesn't always prevent it but it helps a lot and so here I'm just gonna flood right over and you won't even notice that little squiggly line and so I'll do this section first and then we're gonna move on to the outside sections and the reason I want to go to the outside sections and not the ones next to it is I want a separation of the icing and so if I flood the section right next to it the icing will probably touch and then it'll just make a flat layer across but I actually want a little indent everywhere I put a line and so that's why I'm skipping sections and this way it goes a little bit faster I do a few sections let it dry we'll come back and do the sections in between and when I say let it dry if you have a fan it speeds up the process you know blowing air on your cookies it might take about half an hour 40 minutes um, if you have a dehydrator that helps speed up if you don't then you'll just have to leave them on the counter and let them air dry but if you're doing you know a couple dozen cookies you can do all these sections on each cookie and then you know the time passes your first cookie might be dry enough to go ahead and move on to the sections so now we're going to do the sections in between and again I put my squiggly line there to prevent those craters and I'm using my icing to go as much towards the, se the section beside it as possible. I'm not putting my tip in there, I'm just pushing the icing up against the side of the other section. So that way my icing is kind of doing the work. I always keep my cookie in the same spot in the videos, um, just for you guys so that you know I'm not turning the cookie all around different ways. But at home, if you guys are icing and it's easier to flip that cookie upside down, or sideways or whichever way you want to flip it then go ahead you don't always have to have your cookie in the same spot and now I can do these top sections they're not really touching those other ones that are wet and so you can see the divide between the sections now because I waited a little bit between those middle sections and outside sections now I have a nice section line area that you can definitely see the definition of the pumpkin and again, we have to let it dry a little bit so that those sections stay separated from the stem. And here I'm gonna put again my outline here. And especially sections like this really small, what happens is the icing dries on the outside faster than in the middle and then the icing caves in sometimes in the middle. So that's why we try to do this. But sometimes, you know, I have a dehydrator and it helps a lot to prevent craters, but sometimes when I work on my cookies a little bit too long, um, especially when we're filming, sometimes I can't put them into dry right away or I'm kind of waiting around too long. I do get craters here and there and you'll see later on that this one actually does get a little bit of a crater when it does dry, but it's not the end of the world. A cookier maybe will notice it, but you know, your average person that's going to go and bite into that cookie won't like a second look. So don't be too hard on yourselves. Okay, for our next cookie, we're gonna do a nice fall wreath. So again, I chose this shape. I love this shape, it's just something different. It's very versatile. I've used it for a bunch of different cookies and it's one of those things, it's a cheap metal cutter and it's great to have on hand. You can use any shape you want. A circular one helps, of course, with the wreath, but a square would even do. So what I'm doing is taking my outline icing here and I'm staying really close to the cookie. I'm hovering right above it. I'm not necessarily touching my piping bag to the cookie, but if I lift my piping bag too high, then I can't get those nice, small, rounded edges. By the time I lift it up and come back down, I'll be way past the edge of the cookie or the section so whenever you have small turns like this stay really really close to the cookie and you get way more control over where your line's gonna fall and every time that there's indents inside towards the inside of the cookies I like to over exaggerate with my outline so that it keeps those sections nice and separated because when you go to flood the flood tends to want to flow to the outside of the cookie and you know all those sections kind of end up together 
So if you over define your outline, it'll help keep your flood inside for those inside points. And then I'm going in with my flood here and I'm going slowly. And again, you can see I'm going around my outline and I'm not sort of going on top of it. You know, those outlines that are coming, pointing inwards. And again, the reason being is because if I flood over top of it, I'll, I'll lose a lot of those indentations. And I kind of like the shape of the cookie, so I'm trying to keep it as much as possible. When I start to flood the inside of the cookie, it'll push that flood more outside. So the less I start with on the outside. And then here I can just go in and fill in as normal. I'm just following kind of the shape of the flood here that's falling and then eventually it'll all smooth out. So to make the wreath part, um, we're going to use our outline brown. So this is my thick icing. Notice how I'm just sort of letting it flow onto the cookie. If I keep the piping bag right on top of the cookie, I won't get that smooth circular line. So that's why I have it lifted up in the air so it falls nice and smooth. And I'm just guiding that line and I'm going to go around and around. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And I'm just going to layer the icing on top just to create the base of our wreath. If this icing was our flood icing, this would all melt together and you wouldn't see the individual strings of icing. And so that's the difference between the consistencies. If it is melting together, that means that your outline consistency is not stiff enough. You need to add a little bit more powdered sugar and just stir it in until it holds its shape nicely. Once you're done, you can touch down um, to end that line. And if you feel like you need a little bit more in one section or in another section. Um, you can always start over again or just add you know, individual lines. It doesn't really matter. And then we're gonna set this aside for a few minutes, just let it dry. I find that when you let it dry, um, it holds its shape because sometimes when you're piping and attaching lines to it, if it's not dry, then it will, um, it will pull the icing towards it. Like if you touch it with your piping bag, you may ruin the shape of the wreath a little bit. So I'm just adding a few twigs sticking out. And these are small little lines. So I'm keeping my piping bag really close to the cookie. And you can put them wherever you like. You can put lots, you know, you can put a little bit. I'm gonna be filling in these little twigs that are sticking out. So I'm just placing them kind of randomly and then we can fill them in in a little bit. All right, so most of these consistencies I'm going to be using now, actually all of them are going to be our outline consistency. So that's our stiff icing because we want it to hold the shape. So I'm going to be deep doing different designs here. I'm going to be doing a few dots, a few sort of leaf looking greenery, but not green type stuff. So for the first one here, I've got my ivory color. And I'm just putting a few dots here. I'm not putting them on um, on top of each other yet. I'm just going to keep them separate for now. Sometimes my icing is a little bit looser, like my outline. And so when you're doing dots like this, if you put them too close, sometimes they'll melt together. Sometimes I make it a little bit stiffer and I can, you know, um, pile the dots on to each other without having them melt together. So it's just getting a feel for your icing and knowing Okay, this is, you know what, this is a little bit looser of an outline, so I'm going to keep these dots separate, and if I want to add more, I'll let it dry for a few minutes, and I'll come back and, and pipe a few more on top. So, sometimes you don't have the exact perfect consistency you need for what you're doing, but it's learning to work with what you made, and if it's really bad, then, you know, you go and remix it, or add a little bit of water, add a little powder sugar, but if it's not worth, you know, you're remixing it, and just waiting for a couple minutes to do the details a different way, you know, that's okay too. So that's things that you learn as you decorate more cookies and you get familiar with your icing consistencies. So I'm gonna just do a few twigs in this color here. I'm not gonna do all of them because we are gonna add different colors and layers to it. And so now I'm gonna grab my orange here and I've listed all the colors below 
for each of the color and I always make two consistencies. I always do my outline and my flood. If you check out my how to make royal icing video, at the end of the video I do show you how I color and how I make my consistencies. So that if you have any questions on that, you can refer to that video as well. And here I'm just filling in the orange a little bit more. So the white ones are going to stay a little bit more sparse. And the orange ones, I don't even know what to call these things, bunches of, I don't know, <laughs> bunches of dots, I guess. Those ones we're going to sort of pile on top of each other. So I'm putting them separate at first just to get my sort of general shape of which way these dots are going to go. And because my icing is relatively stiff, I can go ahead right away and just pipe the dots on top. So it's giving me a little bit of height, a little bit of texture. And as always, you can always let it dry for a few minutes and then layer more on top. Or if you didn't like the way, you know, it was going, you could sort of add more dots and change the shape of it a little bit. And I'm just going to continue building on it. So I want to give these ones a little bit more height. So I'm going to add a few dots on top just to keep it more interesting. And then I'm going to use my sort of burgundy red icing here. Again, it's my outline consistency. And what I'm doing is just pulling these leaves through. So I'm putting pressure in one spot and then I'm pulling the bag down. Once I've built up a little bit of icing, I pull. And I and as I you pull, you want to let go of the pressure a little bit. And so you can see a little bit better here. I put pressure and I pull quickly. That way I'm pulling the icing down. And I just go from you know left to right to left to right, back and forth. And it's kind of hard when you're going on top of you know where we have the brown icing there. It's because it's quite high off the cookie. But I'm just trying my best to connect it and go on top of there. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's why I love these cookies. They're kind of fun and no matter which design you do, it always ends up looking good, you know? And sometimes they don't turn out and then you just add a little bit more detail on top or you know add a few dots here or there and it just kind of ties all together and it looks great so here i am turning my cookie because these motions are kind of hard to do on a different angle and so again we're gonna put a little bit of pressure on the bag and then pull down and i'm almost making a v and you can see and then i'm trying to go up top onto the um, brown section that we have there and I'm just like I said I'm doing my best if you zoom in close it might not exactly look perfect but you can't really tell and when you have so much detail on the cookie it all just sort of comes together Okay, now we will do our bouquet of wheat cookie. So I've got my burgundy red icing here. And again, it's a different shape here. I like to use another shape that I like to use often because it's interesting, it's a great plaque. And if you don't have this shape, you can always make it by you know cutting a rectangle out and just cutting out the corners with, if you have uh, anything circular, you can cut it with. And sometimes you see I go right to left or I go left to right piping. That's because sometimes I find it easier if I'm on the bottom of a cookie to go left to right. So you always do whatever's most comfortable for you. And so every time there's a corner, I always touch down my piping bag. I only want to secure that icing to the cookie. And then if there's a curve, I stay really, really close. Sometimes these curves are really hard to do and the icing is not going your way. So stay close and put a little bit more pressure on your bag so the icing kind of flows out harder and it sticks to the cookie. So then you could sort of turn the icing. And again, my flood here, and I always go nice and slowly around the edges and try to get as much into those corners. If you can't, you know, if you miss a little bit of the corner or something, it's okay, that's what your scribe is for. You can pull the icing into there. And this is quite a larger cookie, um, it has a larger surface area. So if I was doing like a set of these, 
and I had tons of these ones, I would probably cut a larger hole in my bag, in my flood bag, just so that I can get more icing out and cover the cookie faster. So those are things, you know, you learn along the way as well. If you have a really small cookie, like only two or three inches wide, you don't want to cut a huge hole in your flood because um, it's just too much for the cookie. But cookies that are really large and have a large surface area, um, that's, you know, you can cut a bigger hole. My flood here is really loose. Um, this whole set, actually, my flood was a lot looser, I think, than I normally have or a little bit more than I usually would like to have. So sometimes I don't flood my whole cookie too much. I leave a few gaps there when I'm going around just so I don't over flood my cookie. If my outline's really thin and my flood's really loose, my flood tends to, you know, flow over the side of my cookie. So sometimes if I feel like, oh, it's a little bit too loose, I won't flood it, you know, completely so there's no gaps. I'll leave a few gaps and spread out that icing a little bit just so I don't over flood that cookie and then have it come off the edges. So here I'm going to take my ivory outline icing and I'm going to do an X first. So the top half is going to be our bouquet of wheat and the bottom half will be all the stems. So here I'm just putting lines sort of as guidelines for myself and just to build up a little bit of, um, I guess, a, a 3D effect. So it's not all flat and just to see how wild I want to go and how tall I want to go. And so the bottom part is going to be our stem. So this bottom part is just going to be lines. So I'm just going to do a first layer of lines. And then we'll come back, you know, we work on the top a little bit, the bottom will be a little bit more dry. And when I say a little bit more dry, I'm not, I'm not, we're not wanting this to be a fully dry cookie or a fully dried icing before we move on to the next step. A few minutes here and there working on another part is enough for you to go. Sometimes when the icing is wet, it sticks to, you know, the freshly piped icing sticks to the freshly piped on the cookie. And then it moves the original layer somewhere else where you don't want it to go. So drying those for a few minutes helps for it to stay in place when you're piping the next layer. So now using my uh, lines up here as guidelines, I'm doing the same effect as we did on the wreath. And I'm using my orange outline consistency. And again, I'm putting pressure, pulling down, putting pressure, pulling down. And as I pull down, I let go a little bit. So squeeze, unsqueeze, squeeze, you know, let go sort of thing. And I'm not doing these right next to each other because it is a lot of icing that you're squeezing in one spot. If, you know, the bigger section of icing, like a ball of icing, let's say you have, and if you put another ball beside it, they stay a little bit more liquid. So you don't want those next to each other. So I'm doing these ones separate and I'll come back. So I'm going to, from the top layer to the bottom layer, back to the top, back to the bottom, so that everything sort of has a minute or two to dry. And that way I'm not wasting my time sitting here, waiting for the cookie to dry. I'll try to do different sections so that you can kind of get it more done in less time. And so here I'm just building up slowly more of the bottom part of the bouquet. I'm kind of trying to keep a general section area, but you know, a few longer strands, a few shorter strands. I want my last few strands that I'm gonna do at the end of the cookie to go all the way from the top to the bottom but the rest of them underneath, you won't see them. They're just there to build it up. You can kind of go, you know, halfway down if the middle is getting really high and the ends aren't as high, but it'll add to the 3D effect. So I'm gonna use the same outline consistency here and just do the same as the orange. In this too, we're gonna just build it up. So I'm just doing it in the gaps right now. And I can't get in there perfectly into, you know, where all the wheat comes together in the middle. So I go as far down as I can. You know, we just do our best. If I can't get right into that corner, I sort of just pull it down as much as possible into that section. And it just gets more squishy as you go on. But, you know, you just try to fill the holes and give it some layer, some texture. And you keep going until you're happy with it. You know, if you want to add a little bit more orange or keep it more white, add a few more layers, make it more 3D. It's really up to you. And if you have a lot of icing there, the freshly piped, you can always wait if it's if it's melting too much together or if you're piping and it's pushing the other icing, base icing around too much. 
You can always let it dry for a couple minutes. Again, it's thick icing. This icing doesn't take too long to start to crust over. If you're having a hard time keeping them separate or keeping the shape of what you're piping, then maybe let it dry for a few minutes and come back. And I just feel like, you know, the top doesn't quite balance the bottom out. So I'm going to add a few more lines here just to fill in and give it a little bit more of a lift here. And sometimes your icing breaks off. Sometimes, you know, it's not sticking to the cookie if you have really stiff icing. So your icing is almost sort of dry. It doesn't stick as well to the cookie. So sometimes you really got to anchor your icing down before you lift it up. And then we're going to finish off the cookie with a little tie to the bouquet. So we're gonna grab our brown outline icing and just where the bouquet comes together, I'm just gonna do a few lines across and with a slight, like a slight U sort of, not too low, but it's not a straight line across. And that's our wheat bouquet cookie. Okay, on to our leaf cookie. I believe this is an oak leaf cutter, but I love it. It's one of my favorite cutters as well. Again, a very versatile, it's not exactly meant to be piped this way, but I use it for that. I like to try to use my cutters for different um, purposes and not have you know one cutter for each design because we don't want a million cutters. I think I have enough already as is. So I try to make as much as I can with one shape as possible or use it as many times as I can. So here I have a lot of curves. Um, if I need to touch down, I will, but I'm trying to not touch down too many times, especially on the outside of the tips of the curves. You don't want to touch down there because that's kind of the area that someone will see the most and you don't want to break your icing at that point. And then again with the flood here, I'm trying to flood just over my outline a little bit trying to cover it but those are things again when you have um, cookie experience under your belt you can do these little things if you know if you're flooding and it's going over your cookie because you're flooding too much on the outline and you can't quite get the hang of it that's something that comes with time and with practice it really makes a cookie you know it takes it to that next level but if you can't cover your outline without you know, spilling too much, don't worry about it. You can just go out right beside the outline. You don't have to cover it. It's just my preference. I like it to be covered. And then we're just gonna flood all the inside here. If your icing again is really loose, you've made it too runny, then you can always, you know, I'm, I'm flooding here right next to each layer, but you can leave little gaps and then spread the icing so you're not overfilling the cookie. And I like to have my icing loose enough that it settles by itself without a scribe. But if you have it a little bit thicker, you can give it a little, uh, you can give it a little jiggle with the scribe, or give your cookie a shake, and you will settle your icing no problem. So here we're gonna just do a stem. So I went from the top to the bottom of the cookie, and I'm gonna put a little kind of button there, <laughs> or a dollop of icing, and just make the bottom of the stem. Whenever you have a small area. You can use your outline consistency, that's totally fine, and then just smooth it out with a scribe. If it's not smoothing out, you can add a little bit more icing, and it should smooth out nicely. And here I'm just going to follow the sections of the cutter here. And again, if you don't have this specific cutter, um, you can just use any shape and just do, you know, this sort of design on it. It doesn't have to, you know, we don't have a pumpkin cutter, so we put it on a different shape. That's totally fine. I will link this cutter below if you do want it though, below my video in the description. I'm going to add a few extra lines in between the ones that are, you know, meant to be on the cookie just to give it a little bit more um, interest, I guess, and make it a little bit more fun to decorate. I like this one because it's not just, you know, adding a few leaves. Even if you just want to do the leaves, that's fine. It looks really nice too. I've done that many times. But we're going to change it up a little bit because we're doing sort of a fall and Thanksgiving. I want to add a few more colors to it. So in red, I am going to pipe the outline of the leaves here. 
we're just sort of making these teardrop shapes he's pointed at the edge they don't have to be perfect and then I'm going to skip some of them I won't do it on all the ones just so we can add some other uh, type of flowers there I guess call them or leaves so while I'm doing this outline, I'm going to do another step so that this outline dries for a few minutes and then we'll come back and flood this. I try to do as much as possible at the same time without waiting too much in between. So now I'll grab my blue outline consistency and we're just going to add some dots. So I'm just putting pressure in one spot. That's all it is. So I'm, you can see I'm kind of squeezing the bag a little bit just to get a dot on there and just putting them wherever I want and making a Kind of like a teardrop shape again, but not so pointy, I guess. So you can add as many as you want. You can build it up. You can add just, you know, a sparse few dots there. Whatever you really like. Make it longer, make it wider. And then I'm going to add my orange as well. I usually like to make sort of one color all bunched up. And I like to make another color just, you know, a few dots. But you can do it any way you'd like. It's just giving you an example. I'm just going to add a little bit more blue on top to give it a little bit more height. And then once I'm happy with it, we can go in and flood the red leaves. But before I do that, I'm going to add those little squiggly lines of outline consistency. So now I'm going to go in to fill the leaves in. So I'm going with my outline consistency and I'm just putting a little squiggle of icing. I don't wait for this to dry. I go right in with my flood after. And again, it just helps it stay a little bit puffier. It helps prevent craters. My base layer isn't fully, fully dry. That ivory part um, has crusted over. It's dry enough for me to do these details without breaking the icing. But if I put my finger through it, it will poke through. So that also helps to keep that icing nice and puffy when that layer is not fully dry underneath. And I'm just quickly filling them in. And if you need to fix any parts, um, I just take my scribe usually and just pull the icing towards the end. Sometimes the hole in my bag is a little bit too thick to get right up into those little small corners. So that's when I use my scribe and just pull the icing to the edges. I hope you enjoyed the Thanksgiving tutorial. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and give these fall cookies a try and let me know how they go. I will link the recipes for the cookie and the royal icing below the video, as well as all the colors and tipless bags that I've used. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know below. Thank you so much for watching and happy baking!